I received a video a couple of days ago that I just now had time to take a look at, and uh, this needs to be addressed. you got to check this out. Rob, surprise indeed, because it's not what most people will think when they read what's going on with his tailgate. In fact, his painting, Read Your Bible, isn't what most people would think either, as I found out this morning when I spoke to him at his home. I put the scripture on there about five years ago. Along with the verse from 1 Corinthians, Hicks painted on three crosses, the fish symbol, and read your Bible. The reason I put this particular message on, I want people to read the Bible. I want them to see this message and say, is that true? But the true reason behind the multiple messages and Tom Hicks' take on the Bible may surprise you. It's a hateful, hateful piece of work which Christians try to turn around and they talk about love. Tom Hicks tells me he isn't a Christian. Right now I don't believe there's a God, so I guess you would say I'm an atheist. Most who read the message on his tailgate believe Hicks is trying to send a biblical message. It was so outrageous and so offensive. Some, like this driver in Northern Virginia, aren't happy. It concerns me that something like this has become accepted in some ways and that it's okay to, for folks to feel free to share such hateful uh, and misogynistic thoughts. Hicks says, Hopefully people will read it and learn for themselves. These preachers and, and priests and ministers, they're making stuff up. Okay, the truth is, he's the one that's actually making stuff up. But this is what happens when you refuse to read the Bible in the way it was intended to be read. This atheist is using this passage way out of context so as to gain notoriety as well as appeal to the masses that also refuse to read Bibles. He claims the verse is anti-women in nature, when in fact it's not that at all. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Had he read the Bible and then looked into how the Christian church started 2,000 years ago, he would understand why Paul said what he said that day. 2,000 years ago, the people in the newly formed churches were meeting in ways that, like the early churches in America's infancy, meant the women sat on one side of the church and the men sat on the other side. Plus, in the synagogues, the women were never allowed to speak at all in the churches. But in the newly formed Christian church, they actually had a voice and did in fact participate in the services. And being a new church wherein the men were still considered the Bible teachers of the homes, Whenever Paul or any other Christian preacher spoke on things that appeared new to the people, the women, who were used to being taught by their husbands about the Word of God at home, who never before had such freedoms in the synagogues, were flaunting their newfound freedom to speak in the Christian church so as to ask their husbands if what the preacher was saying was true, which is really no big deal when you think about it, but here's the problem. They were sitting across the aisle, and so they had to speak up to get their husband's attention, and in so doing, would disrupt the service. Worse yet, their questions would often cause confusion in the minds of many attending, and so the sermon would have to end abruptly so that the preacher could try to quench the disturbance that was being caused by more than one person demanding answers to the questions that the women brought up. And so Paul stated the following. Now I'm going to read this in context. 1 Corinthians 14, verses 33 to 35. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. The atheist in the video purposely left out the preceding and trailing verses, because if he posted them on his tailgate, then he would be exposed as a liar to even the scoffer who eventually opened the Bible. It is obvious that the women's shouts across the aisle were interrupting the preachers and causing the confusion that Paul mentions here and says there should be peace during the church services. And so Paul politely asks the women to be silent during the service, as is the Christian duty for both men and women. They should wait till later to ask their husbands at home. For to interrupt the sermon was shameful for Christians to do and should not be allowed during the services. I mean, to further confirm the atheist was taking the Bible out of context to claim it is hateful towards women so as to cultivate more atheists, one has to ask, what about all the women of the Bible? that were used of God in mighty ways and in and outside the church. And just to name a few, and there's a lot of them, what about Esther or Ruth, Rebecca, Martha, Rachel, Elizabeth, Priscilla, or even Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ? Or what about 1 Corinthians 11 verse 5 that speaks of women that prayeth or prophesieth during church services? 
What of the prophet Joel that stated in Joel 2.28 that in the last days your daughters shall prophesy? Or better yet, what of Paul's favored understudy whose mother Eunice and grandmother Lois taught him the scriptures at a very young age to the point he became a leader in the New Testament Christian church? The atheist in the video is merely doing as atheists do. He never read the Bible, and so he looks for verses he can pull out of context to sanctify his reasons for ignoring the God that loves him enough to die for him 2,000 years ago. Pray for this sin-sick soul as you would anyone in grave danger of damnation. And by the way, how about we look into this a bit deeper in the coming days? And what I mean is, please share with me in the comments section below or email me from my main site at remedygod.org a statement an atheist said to you that made the Bible look questionable to all those that were listening to him or her. Perhaps we can use their confusion to reveal truth to those dear souls with questions. Thank you for watching. God bless.